Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning worship this morning. Um, I was very happy to see that my path into town was not underwater this morning. I've been watch watching the news, and I know there's been a lot of people having a lot of problems in Humboldt. So I've been in my thoughts and my prayers for, what, two weeks now? A couple of weeks, whatever it was. Um, and we've got, I've got several friends in Spencer that, uh, one of them I know had water waist deep in her basement. So that's not been a good, good time, but I'm glad you're all here this morning. Um, come together to worship God. So let us go ahead and begin. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep. I was, I was reading my notes clearly. <laughs> If you brought it to church today, um, I can take it with me. If you need to drop it off, you can drop it off at the Methodist Church this afternoon about 4 o'clock, 3 or 4 o'clock. Um, holler at me, let me know if you need me to pick it up or whatever. So um, I'd ask for prayers for a successful BBS for this week for everybody involved. <laughs> yes. One of us has had a birthday last week. Her name's Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday and congratulations. Something like this, I don't mind so much, but I have warned my wife, if she ever pulls that on me in a restaurant, <laughs> she's walking home. Let those who are able please rise as we say together our call to worship. Great is the Holy One who sits sovereign and near. We gather, we observe, we recognize, we ponder the wonder of, cre of the Creator's majesty. mighty deeds of power astound and amaze. We remember and recount from generation to generation. Praise our God. Let us pray. Holy God, come into our village and teach us to be your people. As we receive your word and rejoice in your grace, grant us the courage to share the message of your love. Guide us out of the darkness of doubt and confusion and into the light of faith and hope that we may share your light with the world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please join us in our opening hymn this morning. <laughs>
Please be seated. When we look at the relationships we hope to have with one another and with God, we must admit how broken we are. But as we gather in the presence of God, we are promised forgiveness and healing. If we will confess our sins, please join me as we pray to the one who never ceases to love us. Merciful God, forgive us when we are paralyzed by confusion and doubt. Strengthen our faith that we may not only believe, but may be filled with power to help and heal. When others reject or refuse our ministry, help us to be forgiving and grace-filled. Grant us the courage to accept those things that cannot be changed and that we may be freed from anger and resentment. Forgive us when our disappointment clouds our wisdom and confuses our actions. Guide us on this path of ministry that we may feel the joy of our ministry. God's grace is sufficient for all our needs, covering all our sins. God's power is made perfect in our weakness as Christ redeems our lives and reconciles us fully and completely to God. Amen and amen. Our Hebrew Testament reading is taken from 2 Samuel 5, verses 1 through 5 and 9 through 10. After Saul's death, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, he stayed in Ziklag two days. On the third day, a man showed up from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dirt on his head. When he reached David, he fell to the ground, bowing low out of respect. Where have you come from? David asked him. I've escaped from the Israelites' army, he answered. What's the report? David asked him, tell me. The man answered, the troops fled from the battle. Many of the soldiers have fallen and died. What's more, Saul and his son, Jonathan, also have died. How do you know, David asked, the young man who brought the news that Saul and his son, Jonathan, are dead. He said to me, please come over here and kill me because convulsion has come over me, but I'm still alive. So I went over to him and killed him because I knew he couldn't survive after being wounded like that. I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm, and I brought them here to you, my master. I have a reading from Psalm 48. In the city belongs to our God. The Lord is great and worthy, worthy of praise. His holy mountain is a beautiful sum summit, the joy of the whole world. Mount, Mount Zion in the far north. God is in, is the city of the great king. God is in its fortifications, revealing himself as a place of safety. Look, the kings assembled themselves advancing all together. When they saw they were stumbled, they panicked and ran away frightened, frightened. Trembling took hold of the right there like a woman giving giving birth out or like the east when 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 it smash smashes the ships of Tarshish just like 
we had heard, now we've seen it for ourselves in the city of the Lord. Have been the force in the city of our God. May God make to it circular forever since. Salah, we do dwell on your faithful God. In your temple, your praise, God, just like your rep reputation extends to the far corners of the earth. Your strong hand is fill filled. Right, yeah. right, let Mount Zion be glad. Let the towns of Ju Ju Judah rejoice be because of your actions and justice. Walk around Zion. Go all the way around it. Count its towers. Exam its defend defenses closely. Tour its for its so that you may tell future generate generations they is god our god forever and and always you is the one who will lead us even to the very end our apostle reading is from second corinthians 12 2 through 10. grace to you and peace from god our fathers and from our lord jesus christ God's comfort in trouble. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus be blessed. He is the compassionate Father and God of all comfort. He is the one who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort other people who are in every kind of trouble. We offer the same comfort that we ourselves receive from God. That is because we receive so much comfort through Christ in the same way that we share so many of Christ's sufferings. So if we have trouble, it is to bring you comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is to bring you comfort from the experience of endurance while you go through the same suffering that we also suffer. Our hope is for you is certain because we know that as you are the partners in suffering, so also you are in partners in comfort. Brothers and sisters, we don't want you to be unaware of the troubles that we went through in Asia. We were weighed down with a load of suffering that was so far beyond our strength that we were afraid we might not survive. It certainly seemed to us as if we had gotten the death penalty. This was so that we could have confidence in God who raises the dead instead of ourselves. God rescued us from a terrible death and we will rescue us. We have set our hope on him that he will rescue us again. Since you are helping with your prayer for us, then many people can thank God on our behalf for the gift that was given to us through the prayers of many people. Our gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark 6 verses 1 through 13. Jesus left that place and came to his hometown. His disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue. Many who heard him were surprised. Where did this man get all this? What's this wisdom he's been given? What about the powerful acts accomplished through him? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't he Mary's son and brother of James, jo Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? They were repulsed by him and fell into sin. Jesus said to them, prophets in, are honored everywhere except in their ho own hometowns among their relatives and then their own houses, household. He was unable to do any miracles there except that he placed his hands on a few people, sick people and healed them. He was appalled by their disbelief. 
sending out the disciples. Then Jesus traveled through the surrounding villages, teaching. He called for the 12 and sent them out in pairs. He gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey except a walking stick, no bread, no bag, and no money in their belts. He told them to wear sandals, but not to put on two shirts. He said, whatever house you enter, remain there until you leave the place. If a place doesn't welcome you or listens to you, as you leave, shake the dust off your feet as a witness against them. So they went on and proclaimed that people should change in their hearts and lives. They cast out many demons and they anointed many sick people with olive oil and healed them. Thank you so much. It's wonderful, wonderful to hear such a young voice reading the words of God. Hopefully you can continue to do that. I'm gonna start out this morning by doing two things that I was told I should never do from the pulpit. Former pastor, I started on this journey some close to 30 years ago, told me one thing you should always remember, never apologize from the pulpit. The second thing, he says, don't mix two topics. It just confuses the people. Some would say that this is a house strictly for the worship of God and his son, Jesus Christ, and that politics or national pride should never enter these doors. But to me, the privileges we so graciously accept as Americans come directly from God and therefore should be honored and acknowledged once in a while, even if they are from the pulpit. Today is July 7th. Just three short days ago, we celebrated the anniversary of the birth of this great nation of ours. One of the greatest ever to be here on this earth. Parades, maybe some of you participated, attended, watched. As for me, I enjoyed a lot of them here in my living room. Heard the Star Spangled Banner many times. Some of which, some of those songs, especially um, at the end of different concerts, uh, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, the 1812 Overture, kind of get to me every time I hear them. I just love those. But I also heard during several of the shows, people make statements of, I'm proud to be an American. That statement, probably factual. We should be proud to be this, proud of this great country, proud of our cities, proud of our schools, proud of our way of life. But there's one other statement that's just as meaningful that I never heard, not even once. That statement, I am grateful. I said grateful. And I praise God every day because it is by the grace of God that we could be, that we are not waking up every morning in Bosnia or China or India or other places in turmoil. It's by the grace of God that we don't wake up every morning wondering where our next meal is coming from or how we're going to feed our family and probably not, not even knowing that God exists. But here we are this morning in this beautiful, gorgeous building, beautiful stained glass windows surrounded by friends, a wonderful church family, and almost too many blessings to even think about, let alone, let alone count. I am deeply grateful to be a citizen of the United States of America, and I trust that you are too. 
So what are we grateful for? Father was talking to his teenage son one day with some sort of a agree disagreement. Maybe one setting house rules that the other thought was too strict. I think we've all been there. Everyone who lives in these United States is a very privileged person. To which that young man shouted, I disagree. The father simply replied, that is your privilege. We have the privilege to disagree. We have the privilege to speak our mind. We have the privilege and the freedom to worship whenever, wherever, and however we want. Of course, there are those who are trying very hard to take that particular privilege away from us. That's another, that we're not gonna go there this morning. Have the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the freedom to express our own opinion, freedom to hope and to pursue our dreams. We have these privileges before because our forefathers fought and died for them and gave them to us. When I, my part, I think there's some veterans here though, we didn't earn them. They were a gift just as our redemption and forgiveness of sin and the gracious blessings from God we enjoy are a gift from him. I'm not trying to identify or compare our forefathers to God. Definitely not. God stands alone and there is no other. I'm just trying to make a point that we, that just as we have received unearned gifts and blessings from God, we are also the recipients of many unearned privileges as citizens of this great country. Now I know that I'm gonna get an argument from some our military veterans who remember the fighting and the losses of war when I say unearned. I can hear them say, if we didn't earn them, then what would you call it? I call it defending. What are you and every veteran and every person lost in every war since 1776 doing? We were, they were defending the privileges earned by those who went before. That's the difference. Just as Christians must work every day to be the kind of Christians God wants us to be, to be worthy of the blessings God showers on us. And it does take work. We as citizens must work to defend those privileges we've been granted by our forefathers. There's another parallel. We as citizens tend to look at all the privileges as free and tend to forget that they take a little tending once in a while. I'm sure you've all heard of the stories who, about people who like to get something for nothing. There's one about a man in a small town who would always drive up and down the street looking for a parking meter that still had some time on it. it didn't matter that there were plenty of open parking spaces or that he could use 50 cents or a dollar worth, dollars worth of black, he could use 50 cents or dollars worth of gas driving up and down the street looking for that one nickel free parking space. Too often as citizens, we find ourselves doing something about the same thing. Gee, if we can just get this one person or this board on this committee to do this for us, we can enjoy the benefits without having to do the work. Same thing happens with God. If we just attend church, but don't serve on any of the boards or committees or don't help with anything, maybe even not put anything in the collection plate, we would still be able to enjoy the blessings and the grace of God without actually having to do anything. What would express this well? We eat from orchards we did not plant. We drink from wells we did not dig. We reap from fields we did not sow. We warm ourselves at fires we did not kindle. We are sheltered by roofs we did not build. We are blessed by monies we did not give. Yes, I'm thankful to be a citizen of the United States of America. I'm deeply blessed to be a follower of Jesus Christ, but we have certain responsibilities to both. 
Are we enjoying the fruits of someone else's labor while not doing our share? Are you one of those people who want Christianity without comment? When someone threatens our country and our way of life as has happened on September 11th, we all get, get all angry, get up in arms, ready to defend ourselves. Military enlistments skyrocketed during that period. But does the same thing happen when someone threatens our faith, someone threatens our beliefs, our morals, or our value system? Are we just as ready to sacrifice as Jesus did for our church as we are to sacrifice for our country? In the book, Living Above the Level of Mediocrity by Chuck Swindle, there's a story about a church in the Soviet Union a few years ago. Forced to meet secretly because to meet for church services in a house was against the law. The worshipers tried to be as inconspicuous as possible when they met for Sunday services, gathering at different times, different places, casually walking into a house until they were all in attendance. Then they would close the doors and draw the curtains and quietly worship God. Well, as it happened one Sunday, right in the middle of worship service, two soldiers broke down the front door, lined up the worshipers at gunpoint against the wall, and one shouted, if you wish to renounce your faith in Jesus Christ, leave now. Two or three left pretty quickly, then another, then three more. And the soldier spoke again, this is your last chance. Either leave now and renounce your faith in God or stay and suffer the consequences. A few more left, and one more, almost hiding their faces in shame as they left. But the rest stood their ground. Children standing behind, beside their parents, trembling, some even crying as their parents stood with their hands raised, fully expecting to be gunned down, or at least put in prison. After all had left who chose to flee, the soldier closed the door, Look back at those, back at those who stood against the wall and said, keep your hands up. But this time in praise of our Lord Jesus Christ, we too are Christians. After explaining how they had come to the Lord and become believers, they simply said, we have learned that unless people are willing to die for their faith, my friends, I hopefully pray, hopefully pray that you are all thankful to be part of this great land of ours, that you do not and will not take your citizenship lightly, that you determine to hold high those freedoms and privileges we so freely enjoy, so that just as we have generations who follow us will experience and enjoy them also. In the same manner, I hope and pray that you will all you will all be the kind of Christian who refuses, who values the truth of God and the work just as diligently to never compromise your faith. And you you will work to share it with the world. Hear what desperately needs to be heard. For only through that truth are we guaranteed eternal life with the Master. Praise be to God, the Father, and to his Son, Jesus Christ.
Please be seated. Begin this morning as we come together in front of God. Are there any special cares or concerns that you share? Presley, right? What else? Flood victims. Anything else? Let us pray. Holy and merciful God, we gather together this morning, humble hearts to bring before you our special cares and concerns this morning. We know that not only in Humboldt, but in several other towns up and down the river, hurting, who have lost a little, and yet there are people who have lost everything. Ask that you, with them, comfort them, show them the, the way to continue. It's a long journey. Stand and walk beside them each and every day this morning for Presley and for Madison. We ask that you bless each and every one as we go about our daily work that you have given each of us to do. Do it in, in our own way, but in your glory and honor. All this we ask in Jesus' name. God calls us to serve and invites us to give, knowing that God will be guiding us and that God will be leading us. Let us claim the generosity of God. In our celebration of this bounty, we share our treasures, talents, and time with the church. and prayer of dedication. Despite the sufferings and challenges on our journey, your power transcends human weakness. Celebrate your generosity by sharing treasures, talents, and time along our way. No matter where we travel or which hardships we face, we sing your name in every corner of the earth. Our songs of praise who share our gifts with your creation. Let us join together again in him.
drink the facility with the blood of Christ shed for all. Let us stand and join together in our prayer of dedication. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the life and love of Christ, that we may be disciples of Christ for the world, redeemed by your love and grace. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one ministry to all the world. May we proclaim your love and your hope in Christ comes again in final victory. When we will drink of the fruit of the vine and feast at your heavenly banquet. Jesus the Christ, together with the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Let's join together in our closing hymn. Thank you. now let us delight in the steadfast love of God as we share our weaknesses and celebrate our strength. Let us rejoice in God's glory as we rejoice in our individual and our communal callings. Let us sing of God's name as we journey throughout God's great earth. Let us remember God who guides our paths, the Christ who strengthens us and the spirit who nurtures us. May the divine image dance within us forever. Amen and amen. Go in peace. <laughs>